Hi everybody, we are Rhapsody of Fire and you're watching Grasser Production. Hi, welcome to Grasser Productions. We're here tonight in Munich with Rhapsody of Fire, especially with Alex, Manu and Giacomo. Hello. Welcome guys. Ciao. <laughs> Thanks for the interview. <laughs> no, for real now. It's your third tour date in Germany today. Um, how's the tour so far? It's been really good, really good. You are very, very satisfied, very happy. The response of the audience to the new song is unbelievable. So that's the biggest achievement yeah. that we, uh, yeah, that we are proud of, proud of. What are some personal highlights of yours? Favorite cities, favorite shows? Um, we started with a big bang in uh, in Spain, and so <laughs> every show is um, a new, unique situation, you know. But I think that the Spanish people, the French people, were very good, and so I don't know. We will, we let's see. Maybe Munich will be better. <laughs> yeah, of <laughs> course. Yeah. Of course. <laughs> it's a very personal show to you, Manu. Yes. Are you looking forward to the show tonight? Yeah, my family family um, is coming, a lot of friends are coming, so it's going to be a good and busy night for me. Yeah, Glad to hear that. So, how much time uh, did you spend on planning this tour, on the stage production? Is there anything special going on, on this tour? Well, we, have, we worked um, four days in, um, to do rehearsals, but I think that uh, everybody has his own uh, space and time uh, at home to rehearse and uh, prepare for the tour because it's so uh, physically, I don't know, um, demanding. <laughs> yeah, demanding. And so um, that's my story, but I don't know, maybe <laughs> even Manu, I think. Yeah, f what shall I say? I had to practice, um, f I think, three weeks, four weeks before the tour every day playing the drums, playing the whole set yep. to, to just to get in shape for the tour because I have to play uh, I think two hours on stage every day uh, freaking demanding set <laughs> so <laughs> uh, my legs are burning already but yep. um, <laughs> Hope I can make it, and yeah. you won't so you fire me. As you can see, <laughs> as you can see, the music is the first thing. I mean, yeah. there was not a big pre-production, actually. You know, the music yeah. is the first thing. You know, we think about. We have a great sound engineer, of course, okay. and that's it. We go on stage, we play. We are that's what it. You see. <laughs> we are what you see. <laughs> what you see is what you get. Yeah, right? what you see. What that's you great. So, uh, what about the opener bands? Are they personal friends of yours, or how did you come up with the lineup? Well, p personally, no. Uh, Dirk from Gamma Ray, and I didn't know Mike Tarana, but he's revealed to be a very nice guy. Yeah. And uh, yeah, we had we, we had some names, but uh, Avalanche uh, really came up, and I think was a a very good, uh, very good uh, sure. band to, to choose. Yeah, yeah, sure. Oh. Yeah, it's same for me. I met uh, Mike a couple of times uh, ago, mm -hmm. but. Uh, nothing more and I see that the guys are so kind and uh, it's a pleasure to share this tour together so we're sitting here with two relatively new members of the band you as one of the founding members how are those guys holding up so far <laughs> very good I'm really I'm really happy <laughs> I'm really happy yes I uh, yeah I always said this in every he interview has to say that. Yeah, of course. Yeah. 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 The camera. and they are here so I cannot <laughs> <laughs> Tell the whole truth. No, no, I'm, I'm really happy. I'm really happy. So no problems with the age gap and stuff like that. Age gap? No, 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 no. Oh no, this is a it's it's a good thing because they are young, so I can squeeze them. You're still young too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's true. It's true. They have more energy, so it's 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 great. Um, so let's talk about a new new record, um, Eight Mountains. It was released like 13 days ago yeah. how's the reception so far amazing amazing, amazing really uh, from fans uh, from the media all over the world the reviews and the comments are just yeah. amazing beside the, the the charts result we had in germany mm -hmm. so we never reached this position before ever so we landed at the yeah. 22 and it's great we want to thank the German fans for that. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank you. 
um, so let's take a quick look at the songwriting process. What does it look like uh, being in Rhapsody of Fire? How do you write a record? Oh uh, well, it's now it's uh, I am basically I start everything by myself with the help of Robbie because. Uh, is uh, developing a lot of guitar riffs and some parts and we work basically together for a for a for a for a short period of time then i'm i work by myself it's it depends is uh, for this album specifically i wanted to to have more uh, a positive approach in with the music you know with like we had in the very beginning of the career you know and uh, lately the albums uh, turned out to be too dark at the end you know still i i love everything i do but the eight mountain really i wanted to do an album with hell which feature uh, more major key songs more open anthems and uh, you know It's like more bright uh, kind of writing, you know. So that's why the people are, uh, it's talking about. Ah, it sounds like uh, you became back to your roots or stuff. It's just that at the beginning, this is the, the music we were playing, you know. Like I won't say happy music, but <laughs> really positive. I mean, yeah. really, you know. So this was the thing, the, the the main component I was missing, you know, and I wanted really to do. And then, of course, I start with list of sounds I want to use or uh, situa situation I want to have, or and then I write down everything, you know, instruments, orchestra, choirs, mm -hmm. where to record it, everything all in a big document, and then this gives me the input to to work, you know. So yeah. I worked for almost two years on this uh, record because I not only composing but arranging, recording, editing and preparing everything for the mix that was done by Seb uh, from Morden Organ. So at the end it's a lot of work but everything very fluent, fl fluid, fluent yeah. you know, very exciting at the end. No. So where do uh, Giacomo and Manu come into play here? Do you just show them the completely yeah, finished well music and say, play I, that? Yeah, well, I work with demo, so I create a demo by, by myself with drum, bass, and with real guitars at this time. We are already real guitars recorded for the demo. I do basic drumming, you know, and then I... Me too. <laughs> <laughs> And then I gave everything to Mano. I didn't even went to the studio. I just left, left him, him with Seb, and the result was perfect. With Giacomo, of course, I, I like to work uh, in person, and yeah. it's a different story for me. I'm more involved in drums. <laughs> <laughs> cool. <Yeah. laughs> yeah, because um, I took care about the lyrics, and so yeah, it was a, okay. uh, a challenge for, my, for me, and uh, it was good. I think that we, I, I can improve myself and do better and better, but <laughs> for now I'm very happy. So speaking of the lyrics, mm -hmm. um, is there a concept behind the album? Yeah, is there a concept uh, um, that uh, I think Robbie was one of the first uh, who, who uh, think about thought about this this concept, uh, and it's about the Nephilim Empire saga. Uh, so it talks about the Nephilim, that is an old uh, legend. Uh, even in the Bible, there are some stuff uh, <laughs> talking about the Nephilim. So okay. we have some. Uh, good ways to to <clears throat> to take I don't know and, and we have I think two or more album to express the this kind of saga <laughs> and let's see so what exactly are the eight mountains uh, it's referred to the Nephilim uh, saga and uh, it's a concept because you have to reach the eighth mountain to um, um, found your uh, I don't know glory or something like that because um, there is the uh, this story it talks about many uh, I don't know many uh, challenges many yeah, diffi challenges. The difficulties you know so if you want the mountains represent always a difficulty you know you human being try to climb a mountain you know because they have something to face mm -hmm. in themselves sometimes you know so this is really the overcoming a huge uh, challenge that sounds great so um, some time ago you released a music video to um, Rain of Fury mm -hmm. why did you choose that song 
but just because the um, AFM, I think that the <laughs> was a <laughs> a really great single. Or uh, the, 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 the story is that I wrote this song for the <laughs> Japanese uh, market. You know, I just did it, wrote it in half an hour. Okay. So let's do this song for the Japanese. And uh, I, I, I had this half finished song in the studio. <laughs> <laughs> yes, remember that. Yes. Yeah. So I I said ah, this is uh, a good song for Japan. And then AFM Records they love this song so much they say let's do the video and i agreed and for japan we did the same version but giacomo singing in japanese yeah. <laughs> really yes so japanese can uh, we listen to that somewhere i think the japanese version has the norm the, la the same album we, yeah. we get the and the bonus track is the rain of fury oh, okay. in japanese yeah. and believe me it's fantastic <laughs> he did a fantastic job it's really yeah, yeah. it's really something it's amazing yes was so funny for me uh, and I um, challenge you myself don't speak even Japanese do you no no I don't <laughs> speak it but it's uh, well, you have Japanese roots right <laughs> <laughs> or oh, maybe I don't know <laughs> uh, but the fact is that Japanese has a um, similar sound to Italian mm -hmm. for some words and so it was not so I don't know <laughs> impossible uh, also. the funny thing is when I wrote the song I really thought about Japan in a way so it's something in the song that uh, when he sang it in Japan, it totally makes sense. Yeah. I mean, this is really <laughs> the, perfect so the perfect song uh, for, yeah. for, for, for Japanese fans, you know. It's not a song that I wrote fast, it just mm -hmm. happened to, to be fast, the, the writing, but it's, um, I'm really happy about that. I mean, it's a great idea to appreciate the Japanese fans. Yes, yeah, yeah. yes, yeah, we always do that. In every record, we have a bonus track for Japan, and this is maybe the most special bonus track ever released from, from the band. <laughs> Who came up with the concept for the video and the location? Well, it, it's uh, easy because we were playing at the Metal Hammer Paradise and so since the band was there together and we live only in separate uh, countries, <laughs> I would say I, 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 I searched a location there around the area and we found uh, this nice uh, castle mm -hmm. and um, and uh, I worked for the, we worked for the first time with uh, this guy Reiner Zip. We did the video from Morden Hogan, mm -hmm. and uh, he's a cool guy. And we went there. We did some photo shooting, and, and the next day the video shooting. It was uh, really cool. We didn't want something too complex, you know. Yeah. It's like nice location, the band performing, and it turned out uh, Pretty really good. Yeah. yeah. So, um, you already mentioned your album position in Germany. It's the highest you ever reached here? And in Germany, so far, yes. So, uh, yeah, as far as I know, yes. I think it is. Of course, yeah. we are comparing different time periods. I mean, we enter in the 30 yeah. position with Power of the Dragon thing. This was back in 2002. So. It's really a wide uh, gap, anyway. So. But then now, it's the only thing Even that counts. Now, yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So that's exactly what I wanted to talk about. Um, because, what do you guys think of uh, record sales and the music industry today? Yeah. As a musician, you you always see as a fan you don't make music out of record sales. You make music touring and selling merch. You mean money? Yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> um, Never had music on my bank account. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I'm sorry. Um, so. I mean, it's a nice compliment, but um, is it still important to you to, m to make money with your music and seeing that you can reach certain positions in the charts? Well, position in the charts doesn't mean uh, that you sold mi a million records. I mean, it's important because you have more visibility in the shops and uh, you gain credibility and it's uh, something nice to have along with all many other things, you know. And... Uh, of course, being a musician, you want to make a living out of this. So, and uh, some bands uh, really are lucky because they have great fans that they still want to have the object and buy the CD. And we are one of them, you know. So, we have a die hard fans group of fans which they will. Uh, eventually purchase the album because they really want it you know and that's why also we do something graphically nice with some limited edition yeah. some different the box, the box yeah. sets and books and everything we we can to to deliver a nice product you know for the normal fan or for the diehard fan you know so it's important of course 
So you're not a big fan of streaming platforms then? Uh, well, it's not that I have to be a fan, but it is is what uh, the kids do today. I mean, if you ask a 12 years old, they don't even know what a CD is. <laughs> they just go on streaming. So this is important to 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 move in this direction, you know, and to be, you know, in the market on the platforms and everything. You have to work, continue working because now we are facing the future, you know. So if you stay behind. You just <laughs> stay behind. Yeah, <laughs> of course. Um, lately, when I talk to bands, um, some already said that they're choosing the set list depending on the Spotify um, streams um, on cities. Makes sense. No, yeah. Can make sense. Can make sense. Yeah. But in our case, uh, you talking about the set list of the shows? Yes. Oh, okay. No, talking about us, I think that is a pure musical uh, uh, fact, and uh, we are proud of that. So we choose, I think, seven songs well, from, the new, from the new album. Like yeah, seven songs on uh, on a twenty, about twenty totally. And so uh, it's nice because uh, everybody can hear the power and um, uh, you know the, the band that play together in a very good way. And uh, yeah, you can <laughs> face that they are the the stage, great uh, songs, uh, even live. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So some time ago you had a little incident with the police and oh. your two of us. <laughs> Do you want to give us a quick recap on that? Well, I remember it, it was last week. Yeah. It was last week and we were supposed to go to the Netherlands to Enschede. <laughs> and um, I remember I was sleeping in my bunk upstairs and at 10 o'clock in the morning I woke up because my my bunk got so bright and I opened up my eyes and I s looked straight into <laughs> a flashlight so okay. there were police officers officers um, looking into the bunks with flashlights and stuff so they were looking for drugs and some illegal bullshit or whatever and um, so I fell back asleep and two hours later at 12 I woke up again and I was re realizing that we are still standing on the same spot so then I went downstairs and I was asking uh, what's happening here so there were four or five um, police cars surrounding us and a lot of police officers and um, they were looking for something because they re they, they just wanted to make money with us Really? yeah they, they just wanted to fuck with us um, and at the beginning they didn't found anything yeah. And because they didn't find uh, find anything, they they um, continued, and then they checked the bus itself. Then they um, checked the brakes of the bus three times uh, with a horrible cheap no, it was machine to check the the I think the brakes. Yeah, but it, it, yeah. it was not set correctly or something. I have no idea. Because the 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 result of the pre of the brakes it was wrong. Yeah. And they they wanted us to 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 stay uh, to leave the bus here to get another bus because they say that the bus is not um, it's it's not allowed to to continue yes. on the street yeah. anymore, yeah. and so they kept us there for five hours or something, and um, finally they found something where they could make money with us mm -hmm. and um, then it was three o'clock or something and um, we were realizing okay we we can't make it to the show it's impossible because we still had a two hour drive or no, something no, or no, more no. four hour drive yeah and yeah and they s they told us okay we can continue now to to the netherlands but um, as soon as we are in the netherlands this bus has to be checked in a repair shop There was nothing nothing to repair, the bus was yeah, perfect. And we got a new bus for, for two days or something. Yeah. And um, this bus was in a repair shop to check everything. And on the next day we got the information that everything is perfect, okay. perfectly all right. 100%, 100%. Uh, efficient brakes in every axe of the... Sad story. Sad story, but... So yeah, really, you we, we play the show anyway. And yeah, yeah. It, it, it happened in Belgium. To add it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no way. <laughs> Fuck the police. No! <laughs> you're fucked. Yeah. No, no, you're gonna get stopped a lot more, yeah. Okay. Um, but you haven't lost your humor about it, right? So they weren't doing their jobs properly. That could have been an excuse for that. But if they really just wanted to fuck with you, that's not, not okay. But 
You they did. wanted because I, I I tried to talk to them I, and I I was telling them, hey we t we have a show today. There were people um, that buy tickets for the show. Yeah. So um, and she was like, uh, Shut up. Sh yeah she I'm was she was screaming at me, yelling at me, and I'm a I'm the police officer. You are nothing. And so, no, right. I'm not joking. It's it's the truth. Yes. Yeah, gladly we could postpone the the show. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, so we switched the off day and the show day, and um, so we didn't have to cancel a show. And it was the the lucky um, outcome. <laughs> outcome, yes. That's great. No. <laughs> no, that you could play the show. Yeah. Anyway, yeah, so yeah, the, the anyway. fans didn't have to wait too long. Thanks to all the fans that understood the yeah. situation, and so that came in, even if it was uh, two days uh, before, uh, after, but. Thank you so much, guys. I'm pretty sure they're, they're glad to hear that. Now yeah. they could watch the story again and again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <with you guys. laughs> okay. So, back to um, the more normal questions. Um, what are your plans for the rest of the year? Oh, well, it's a long uh, way to go, but we have some shows already planned. We are flying to Japan in June, and we have some more festival coming up. Uh, some are released already, some are not yet, so we are working on that. Yeah, it's uh, since the album is out and uh, and the word is spreading and the views and the comments are positive, the shows are popping up, and this is a great uh, feeling. Yeah, for sure. We I think we we will uh, uh, approach the new uh, the new work and uh, the other albums and so. But we are thinking about that shows most important thing. <laughs> Live. Are you going to play the Japanese version in Japan? Uh, for sure. Yeah. As I um, sang in uh, other languages for this ballad, uh, that mm -hmm. one is in the album, and uh, I think I do the same. Uh, I have to study a little bit more <laughs> uh, because it's full of words and the translation is... There are more words in the translation, so it's a bit, little bit uh, tricky for me, but I'll face it. <laughs> I, hey, I think the fans will are yeah, going to sing it for you. Yeah, Probably. maybe it's going to be a great part of the yeah, show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we'll have to sing it perfectly. <laughs> <laughs> he will. He <laughs> will. I, I've no doubt he will. He will. <laughs> yeah, as he said before, the, the Japanese language is close to the Italian as yeah. far as pronunciation. Yeah. It's just uh, it, there's so many more words. It has to mm -hmm. be more in more. Uh, he needs a lot of air. Yes, exactly. <laughs> yes. Um, something I was um, pretty interested in, um, how is the Italian metal scene? i ask Giacomo because I, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I always get asked this question, I don't know, because I lived in Trieste, which is completely out of the center of the music. I see Trieste, there are a lot of musicians, a lot of good bands, a lot of good, good artists, but you know, I'm not involved in this. Actually, I live in London now, so, so I'm, I'm lucky. I, I, nobody can <laughs> ask me this question. I don't know, because I don't even know people in Italy, you know. Okay. I, I don't know any one of them. I know Olaf from Vision Divine, because we, we met uh, a few times in mm -hmm. some occasion in Italy. It's easy to 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 to, to meet with uh, a guy like him, but I really have no connection with anyone. Mm -hmm. So I always I always said, Italy is full of artists, mm -hmm. uh, full of uh, musicians that are really, really good. And uh, I think that what is, they are lacking of ideas, maybe. But I, I don't want to say my opinion on that because I don't really leave the scene. So maybe Giacomo is more involved in what is... What's your opinion, Giacomo? About All right. I'm, I know many people uh, from other bands, and so one of those is Michele Lupi, is a close friend of mine. Mm -hmm. So I can say that there are many, many bands. Uh, I don't know how to uh, consider, um, I don't know if they are um, as famous as they once. I don't know, but the fact is that as uh, Alex was uh, uh, telling, Italy is full of great musicians, and so. Uh, I think that Italy is famous uh, for power metal and melodic yeah. metal, yeah, because uh, of mm, many singers, and so Roberto Tiranti from Labyrinth, and mm -hmm. uh, even Michele or Conti from Trick or Treat, and so, um, I don't know, it's a good place to <laughs> to found a power metal band, maybe. <laughs> but anyway, I, I don't have numbers, and so um, we are thinking about us, and 
we are challenging <laughs> challenging uh, good i think i don't know all right so thanks for your time guys well, thanks for your time. have a great time on stage tonight and hopefully we're gonna see each other again sometime next time yes why not <laughs> goodbye Cheers. bye bye ciao ragazzi ciao <laughs>